into the into the Diab map itself. Diab is a freshman. He's five and twelve on the season. Finished six. Here we at go. Keystone. We've got Diab, a, a freshman nine and uh, from Greensboro, North Hoosiers. Carolina. But Jake Massengale, uh, an actual product of Perry Meridian High School on the south side of Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, a two-time state runner-up, but he actually got a narrow three-to-two decision uh, decision win against number seven Ohio State in late January. So it'll be a nice test to see if he can fend off the young Randall Diab from Appalachian State here today. For sure, Randall Diab coming off of a win against Jaden Cox at Missouri. That was a pin victory he had there whereas Jake Nessengal is coming off of a loss against Hayden Harmack from the Rutgers team. We got a stalemate call early in this first period, but absolutely looking ahead, this matchup will lead us into some of the most key matchups of the day. Uh, we've got the heavyweight bout between Garrett Goldman and Denzel Dijonet that we previewed earlier, but then right directly after that one, we've got Elijah Oliver versus Vito Pizzone in the 125 pound matchup. So it'll be very interesting to see how the Hoosiers use this seven point lead to set themselves in a better position going forward. Both of those next two matchups containing ranked wrestlers, Denzel Dijonet is ranked number six and Elijah Oliver ranked number 19 currently. And there we saw Elijah Oliver getting some water before his match began. But here we have Massengale versus Diab and once again, a very evenly fought matchup in the early rounds, you know, about a little bit over half the time has passed in this first period, but it looks like Massengale and Diab are relatively even so far. I don't think we've yet seen anybody that didn't start off with a pretty long stalemate. Most of them hang around 0-0 for a while from what I've seen so far, Stu. Absolutely, and aside from that Nate Jackson major decision, um, all the actual scores of the matches have been relatively close, so uh, it'll be interesting to see if maybe Appalachian, can, uh, Appalachian State can get a little bit of an upper hand going forward. And there's Jake Massengale with a bit of a defensive move there to stop the advance of Diab. So Diab's definitely got something to fight for. That seven point deficit that his team, App State, is holding right now with the Hoosiers having 10 points, them having three. He's really gonna have to make something happen here. Otherwise that deficit is only gonna get bigger Absolutely, and he has a little bit of something to prove as well from a personal standpoint as uh, coming as a freshman from uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, he was all state as a senior, uh, three years in all conference and was actually an all American as a sophomore. So now it's time for him to prove what he can do at the collegiate level versus an experienced, uh, an experienced wrestler in Jake Massengale. And there he fins off, and he fins off an offensive move by Massengale as the first period nearly draws to a close. He's already back in the mat, in the center of the mat, with a quickness showing that he is not tired, that he is not phased by Jake Massengill at all. We could have a bit of a fight on our hands going into the later periods. Sorry, the second period, the option There we end another Diabe. period, 0-0 zero, zero going into the second. Diabe chooses by. Absolutely, but now we'll see who has the upper hand in this one. We've got Diab starting down, Massengale on top, looking to accumulate some of that critical riding time in a matchup that looks like it may be close going towards the end. And we see Massengale riding Diab here. And a stalemate is called. We will reset in the down position here with just 15 seconds gone in the second period. And a quick one escape by escape. Randall Diab for one point to set himself apart from Jake Massengale. Locked in neutral. This has really, really been a close pairing so far. Which will prove for an exciting finish, hopefully. A separation. Diab resetting for a possible pulling of an attack. He's a bit more upright than Jake Massengale. He uses his height to pull some strong, uh, 
some strong moves. And there we see Diabe with another strong pull as both wrestlers end up on the outside of the mat. And here we see Diabe once again, one of the first wrestlers back to the center of the mat every single time, quicker than almost anyone else we've seen, which is not only a testament to his sheer will to win and desire to show himself as worthy against Jake Massingale, but also it shows that he is not tired, that he has enough gas in the tank to go deep into the third period, which is something that he may need going up against the more experienced Massengale. Definitely something that might be powered by the last two wins that he's had against VMI and Missouri coming into this, hoping probably for a third victory in a row. And a bit of a scare there for Diabe, but he pulls away with unscathed there, and he still holds his one-point lead over Massengale as the second period draws to a close. Massengale looking for redemption from his loss against Rutgers. We'll see what he does with that going into his third period here against Diabe. And here we see this Hoosier crowd super excited, looking to see if Jake Massengale can propel this 10 to three lead that they have just a little further. Gonna have to make that escape to do that though. Hopefully he'll get that one point and tie us up. Absolutely, we've got Randall Diabe still maintaining control here but Massengale doing whatever he can to get the escape. And it looks like he almost has it, but Randall Diabe with a strong, strong push, but not enough for a takedown here in the third period. Pushing pretty. There we see Massengale stretching for the outside of the mat, but Diabe keeping him inside. And there we have the full exit of the mat. We've got a five point lead for Diabe actually after that takedown, I guess they did rule it, pardon me. And he's been making some pretty big leads in terms of his last two meets. He won 13 to six against Mizzou and 12 to six VMA. So he's really been going at it. He's got a bit of strength that he, uh, he enjoys doing that hip toss to the floor uh, as, he's, as we've seen him pull twice on Massingale just in the third period alone. Full reset with Massengale on bottom. He is really hoping for that escape this time around. He needs it. One point escape. And there he gets it. Massengale with a one point escape, but still down four. Two point takedown. Two point for the takedown. We have Massengale already making up this deficit as he sits five to, in a five to three deficit with just about 40 seconds left in the third period. One point escape, Diabe. A one point escape for Diabe as Massigel allows him to just start in the neutral position. Massigel conceding the three point deficit from maybe a better shot to pull some moves here. 30 seconds remain, 30. And there we will stop with just about 30 seconds left. Resetting as Massingale looks to overcome this deficit one final time. And this is surely a grueling sport here as we absolutely have two very athletic, athletic men out there on the mat, but just the fatigue that sets in is really weighing in on Massengale, it seems, as Diabe is simply more prepared to go deep into the rounds, it looks like. 
And we will be seeing even more of that in the next in our heavyweight matchup. Garrett Goldman from the winner of heavyweight is from Appalachian State. Absolutely, and there we have Randall Diabe with the heavyweight.